Packs and Super Packs, presented by the Citizen Genius Project. During political campaigns, you hear about packs and super packs, but what are they and how are they different? In short, they are groups that spend money to influence elections. But let's take a deeper look. Federal law limits contributions to political candidates, or candidate committees, from individuals and political parties. And it prevents contributions from corporations, including businesses, nonprofits, trade associations, and special interest groups. Labor unions are also prohibited from contributing. Going forward, I will refer to all of these by the general term organizations. PACs and super PACs enable individuals, parties, and even organizations to spend money to influence elections without giving directly to candidate committees. Let's examine PACs first. A PAC is a political action committee. PACs can make limited contributions to candidate committees, political party committees, and other PACs. Individuals, candidate committees, party committees, and PACs can make limited contributions to a PAC per election. This chart from the Federal Election Commission's website shows more details on donors and recipients. Donation limits for how much a multi-candidate PAC and a non-multi-candidate PAC can give to each candidate appear horizontally. Limits for how much a PAC can receive from each category appear vertically. PACs must register with the Federal Election Commission and report the names of their donors and account for their spending on a quarterly or monthly basis. The FEC designates two types of PACs. A separate segregated fund is established by an organization, and this type of PAC can only solicit contributions from the organization's employees or members. Others can also contribute as long as they aren't solicited. The organization connected to the PAC cannot contribute its own money, but it can provide financial support for administrative and fundraising costs. This was the first type of PAC and it was created in 1943 by a labor union called the Congress of Industrial Organizations. Because federal law prevented the CIO from contributing to candidates, it created a PAC so it could still have influence in elections. The second type of PAC is a non-connected committee. This type of PAC can solicit from the general public, which includes individuals, candidate committees, party committees, and PACs. A non-connected committee must pay its own administrative costs. A specific type of a non-connected committee is a leadership PAC, which is sponsored by a politician so that he or she can help other candidates. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison of these two types of PACs. Now let's examine super PACs. A super PAC is officially known as an independent expenditure-only political committee and it is a special type of non-connected PAC. Super PACs can accept unlimited contributions from individuals, political committees, which is a somewhat vague term used by the FEC, and organizations. Super PACs can spend an unlimited amount on advertisements, mailings, or other activities to support or oppose a candidate or issue, but they cannot contribute to, or coordinate with, a candidate committee or party committee. Super PACs must register with the Federal Election Commission and report the names of their donors and account for their spending on a quarterly or monthly basis. Two 2010 federal court decisions facilitated the creation of Super PACs by overturning previous campaign finance restrictions. In the Citizens United v. FEC decision, the Supreme Court decided that organizations can spend an unlimited amount on electioneering communications as long as they do so independently of candidate and party committees. And in the SpeechNow.org v. FEC decision, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit removed contribution limits for donations to committees and organizations that act independently of candidate and party committees. Together, these court cases have allowed super PACs to raise and spend unlimited amounts to influence elections. The FEC classifies some PACs as hybrids because they can function as both a PAC and a super PAC by keeping two separate accounts. Finally, here's a simple comparison of PACs and super PACs.
This has been a short overview of PACs and Super PACs presented by the Citizen Genius Project.